What's going on, lovely people? It's Metacosis Perfect Status, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our biology playlist. In the last video, we talked about an introduction for the immune system, including your innate immunity. Today, we'll dig deeper and talk about your lymphatic organs. These include primary lymphatic organs, such as your bone marrow and your thymus. Your bone marrow matures the B lymphocytes. Your thymus gland matures the T lymphocytes. And you have secondary lymphatic organs. And these include the lymph node, the spleen, the tonsils, the mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue, etc. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order for maximum retention. Let's go, the lymphatic system. You have to understand something. Lymphatic systems start here, from between cells. We call this the interstitial space. Okay. It's part of the extracellular fluid because it's outside the cell. Okay, so we are in between cells, but outside the cell. Got it. And then what? You take your fluid from the area around the cells. Okay. And then you go up, 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 up until you reach the lymph node. Why are you doing this? Because the lymph node is very strong. It's going to cleanse all of this fluid. Cleanse it from what? From all the gunk that's in it. From the debris, from the toxins, from the bacteria, from the fungi, viruses, parasites, all kinds of stuff, as much as it can. And then it will bring this clean, filtered blood back into the venous system. The veins will take it back to the heart. The heart will pump clean, nice, fresh blood back into your circulation. So, hey, lymphatic system, where did you start? Here, at the interstitial space. Okay. Where did you end? At big veins. Tell me about your humble beginnings. I started here collecting fluid that was in between the cells. It was dirty. Okay, where did you get the fluid from? Well, there are no free lunches. It has to come from somewhere. When the left side of the heart pumped blood, it went here to the capillary bed. Suppose that the amount of blood entering the capillary bed is about 100%. Okay. This blood will go to the cell through diffusion. Amazing. And then the cell will take oxygen and nutrients from the arterial side and will dump carbon dioxide and waste products onto the venous side. Okay, but veins only collect 90%. <gasps> what happened to the 10%? Lymphatics, baby. This is the percentage that we will clean in the lymph nodes. How about the rest of the blood? Well, remember, you will circulate again. You will come back. Your heart pumps 60 to 100 beats per minute. So eventually, I'll clean all of your blood. Just wait. Good things happen to those who wait. My humble beginnings started as lymph capillaries or lymphatic plexus. And then when something is going to, it's called F. When something is going from, it's called if. If I'm going to the lymph node, it's called the afferent lymphatic vessel. If I'm leaving the lymph node away from the lymph node, it's afferent lymphatic vessel. Between them, there is the lymph node. Good. And then we'll get bigger lymphatic chunks. And then even bigger, lymphatic duct. And then back to big veins and then back to the right atrium. Note that the lymph capillaries are blind-ended. All of the blood that I took from you, I'm gonna return it back to you. Hashtag no fluid left behind. Where does this intersection happen? Usually in big veins at the root of your neck. Notice that the blood circulation is a closed system. What do you mean? I started in the heart. I'm gonna end up in the heart. But the lymphatic system is not a closed system. It's an open system. Why? Because I started here and ended here. I started somewhere but ended somewhere else. I didn't go back to the original location. I started in the interstitial space. I ended up in big veins. That's not a closed system. Do veins have valves? Yes. Do lymphatics have valves? Yes. Do arteries have valves? No. What's in the lymph? Well, all kinds of gunk, the fluid lost from the capillary. True, the 10%. Okay, what else? Pathogens, bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, etc. Cells of lymphatic system, such as what? The lymphocytes. Some hormones, cell debris. There is another function for lymph. Remember when we digested lipid or fat? Yeah, what happened then? You digest something inside your gut and then you absorb it. What do you mean by absorption? Well, it's time for me to leave the gut and go to the blood. When I pass through that membrane, this is absorption. From the gut 
to the blood. Got it. That's absorption. From the gut to the blood. But if you're absorbing fat, there is another route. From the gut to the lymph. What's that called? Lacteal, which means milk. Because it's full of fat, it appears like milk. You package those teeny tiny fat droplets into packages, like Amazon packages? Yeah, but we call them chylomicrones. And then you load the packages onto the truck. Okay, and then the truck will take you back to your house. But hey, medicosis, why do we have to do all of the story? Why not just dump all of the lipids into the blood circulation without going to the lymphatic route? I'll tell you why. Because the lymphatic route is very important to cleanse and detoxify all of the gunk that you have just eaten. If we have a serial killer in the community, what should we do? Well, we gotta protect ourselves. So, remove him from the community. How do you do this? Send him to the lymph nodes, the interrogation rooms. Ooh. What do they contain? Police officers, hashtag lymphocytes. Acting on what? Pieces of melanin, pathogens. And then do what? Destroy them with facts and logic so that they do not go back to the community. Terrible analogy, but it works. Lymph versus chyle. Lymph is just the ordinary stuff. You find this in most lymphatic vessels. Chyle is special for the gut, the lacteals. Lymph is clear and colorless. Chyle is full of fat. It's opaque, it's milky. That's why you call them lacteals from milky. Now, if you become a doctor or a lab scientist or a pathologist and you see the blood of a patient who suffers from hyperlipidemia or hypertriglyceridemia and you look at their blood in the test tube, you'll find it very milky. That's why we call the packages chylomicrones. That's why there are medical conditions known as chylomicronemia. Chylomicrones and emia is the blood. Do you find lymphatics everywhere? Yeah, with some exceptions. For example, your brain doesn't need lymphatics because the brain has its own cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. What are my lymphoid organs? Organs that produce lymphocytes and they include thymus, spleen, red bone marrow, tonsils, lymphoid nodules in the wall of the gut and appendix. The bone marrow and the thymus are the primary lymphatic organs. The rest is called the secondary lymphatic organs. Why? Because bone marrow is for B lymphocytes, thymus is for T lymphocyte maturation. How do we propel the lymph movement, skeletal muscle contraction and pulses? You have superficial lymphatics and deep lymphatics. Superficial are like veins, so they follow veins because veins are superficial, but deep follow the arteries. Eventually, all of them will drain into deep lymphatic vessels. What's the name of the fluid of the systemic circulatory system? Blood. What's the name of the fluid of your lymphatic system? Um, lymph. True. Which literally means the goddess of fresh water, lympha, because she is so clear and colorless. As the Hodge twins might say, she clean, man. We started in the interstitial fluid. We ended up in two big veins. We move by peristalsis. What if we have problems in the lymph vessels? Oh, they can leak. Leak what? Leak lymph into her. Where did they start? Oh, in the interstitial space? Yeah. And what do you call this? Swelling, edema. And when the edema is made of lymph, what do you call it? Lymphedema. Let's go back to the analogy of the police officers. Who made them? God. Who's God here? The bone marrow. Who trained them? The police academy. Who's the police academy in your body? You have two academies. An academy for the B lymphocytes, the bone marrow, and another academy for the T lymphocytes, the thymus. Okay, then what's their site of occupation? Where the flip do they work? Oh, every day they come and hang here by the police academy. What's the police academy? The lymph node, the spleen, the tonsil, the appendix, etc. And then who are these police officers? These are your lymphocytes. Oh, I get it. If you want a more detailed explanation about the lymph node, check out my hematology oncology playlist on YouTube. But let's review it very quickly here. The lymph node looks like a kidney. On the outer part, it has a lovely crust, which is called cortex. Cortex is the crust, but the medulla is in the middle or the core of the lymph node. Some clinical tips. If your lymph node is swollen, well, it could be gazillion things, but let me give you two. It could be because you have a bacterial infection. Remember, there are many bacteria here. Oh, that's why I'm getting a swollen lymph node? Yeah, so it could be an infection. What else? It could be cancer. 
because also if you have cancer cells here, they can end up here in the lymphatics and they will end up in the lymph nodes and this is called lymphoma. Do police officers learn something inside the police station? Of course, it's their everyday operation. What do you mean by everyday operation? Antigen presentation. Because when the lymphocyte or the police officer was young like this, we call him a naive lymphocyte. And then when they learn how to catch a predator, they become mature lymphocytes. What happened between here and here? Well, antigen was presented to them until they were trained to recognize the antigen. Where does that happen? In the lymph node. The lymph node is a gland, and just like any gland, it has a stroma and a parenchyma. The stroma is the bed, just like the chassis of the car. On top of that framework, you will lay down the actual flesh of the node, and this is the parenchyma. The chassis is not a big deal. You can find many different brands of cars that share the same chassis. Same thing here. I can find many different glands in your body that share very, very similar stroma. However, what's different is the parenchyma. The parenchyma of the Mercedes is not the same as the Lexus or the Toyota or God help you Chevrolet. They are different in their parenchyma. That's the actual bulk, the actual substance of the lymph node or any gland. Who are the police officers again? Lymphocytes. And they are made in the bone marrow. They start as naive and then they mature. When the B lymphocyte matures, it becomes plasma cells and it secretes antibodies, such as IgG, IgM, IgA, IgE, IgD. So, who is the creator, the bone marrow? Who is the trainer? Oh, we will learn in the academy. This is where we mature and grow up. If I'm B lymphocyte, bone marrow. If I'm T lymphocyte, thymus. The officers are the lymphocytes. Everyday operations happen in the lymphatic organs. Again, we are doing a very quick review. The original explanation is in my hematology playlist. Cortex and then paracortex of the lymph node, followed by middle cord and middle sinus. Who lives in the cortex? B lymphocytes. Who lives in the paracortex? T lymphocytes. Who lives in the middlary cords? Plasma cells. And last, who is at the middlary sinuses? Macrophages. Cortex, paracortex, middlary cords, middlary sinuses, and then you leave the lymph node via the efferent lymphatic vessels. Inside the cortex, you have follicles like this one. They start as naive. We call them primary follicles. And then when the freaking officer matures, they change into secondary follicle. So not only the police officer matures, the entire police station is becoming more robust. Secondary follicle. Here is the follicle in the cortex, followed by paracortex, then middlary cords, then middlary sinuses. Who lives in the cortex? B lymphocytes. In the paracortex? T lymphocytes. In the middlary cords? Plasma cells. Middlary sinuses is for macrophages. Forget the lymph node. Let's talk about another secondary lymphatic organ, the spleen. The spleen is made of two big sections. We have the red pulp and the white pulp. The red pulp is just blood. The white pulp has many cells, including the lymphocytes. Where do I find my B lymphocytes? Well, do you remember the lymph node? Yeah. Where was the B lymphocyte? It was in the follicle of the cortex. Same thing here. They are in the follicles of the spleen. Okay. How about the T lymphocytes? Let's go back to the lymph node. The T lymphocyte was in the paracortex. The T is always in the P. So the T lymphocyte here is in the periarterial lymphatic sheath or PALS. The T is always in the P. Lymph nodes are all over your body and they tend to cluster into big groups eventually. And this is very important for cancer diagnosis. For example, breast cancer metastasizes to axillary lymph nodes in your armpit. All of these lymph nodes will eventually end up in afferent lymphatic vessels and then lymphatic trunks and then lymphatic ducts. We have two big ducts, right lymphatic duct and thoracic duct. The most important one is the thoracic duct. It basically drains most of your body, except the upper right quadrant, which is for the right lymphatic duct. Alas, everything is going to end up into big veins, which is going to end up into the right atrium of your heart. 
We talked about innate immunity in the last video. Remember, macrophages, innate immunity. Natural killer cells, innate immunity. But the lymphocytes are trained. They are, quote, experts, unquote. So the lymphocytes are part of your adaptive immunity, acquired immunity, because police officers have to acquire certain training. No one is born an officer, despite what they say in the movies. B lymphocytes started as naive. They were made in the bone marrow, they matured in the bone marrow, and then they went to work in the secondary lymphatic organs, such as the spleen, lymph nodes, etc. When they matured, they became plasma cells. After, they recognized the antigen and grew up. And then what? And then the plasma cells will secrete antibodies. What are the functions of antibodies? Well, antibodies are bodies against the antigen. That's why we called it antigen. An antigen is something that generates an antibody. This is foreign to you. This is your defense mechanism. So what are the functions of antibodies? They neutralize the antigen, they neutralize the toxin. They make the bacteria tasty so that the macrophage can enjoy herself while eating the bacteria. They cause agglutination of antigen antibody complex so that it becomes easier for your immune system to clean it up. They activate natural killer cells. Antigen antibody complex also activates the complement system. I have a separate video about the complement pathways in my physiology playlist. How do lymphocytes interact with each other? They have their own internet. Oh, that's how they talk? Yeah, their internet is called interleukin. Inter between. Leuk. Leukocytes. Oh, white blood cells. What's IN? Usually means a protein because it ends in IN. So let's recap. Lymphatic organs in your body are either primary or secondary. Primary, bone marrow and thymus. Bone marrow for the B lymphocyte. The thymus is for the T lymphocytes. Secondary, spleen, lymph node, tonsils, mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue, which can include the tonsils, the appendix, and others. One of the causes of an enlarged, painful lymph node is infections. To learn more about treatment of infections, check out my antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a separate course for renal physiology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.